Hello everyone. Uh, today's current affairs in the Hindi newspaper. If you could see current affairs on Indian economy, so the following important things I could see. So this is a this is not a very small one. It's a big one. So let's look at this. The Hindu newspaper today that is twenty uh, eighth page number thirteen. If you could see, we have something called rupee tumbles to nineteen month low uh, on oil. and also states the central bank uh, is supposed to intervene immediately and it also shows that uh, due to oil prices uh, ultimately it is leading to inflation and you also could see in that news that uh, it would lead to exports of india there are different opinions expressed now i want to tell you one thing here first thing is currency value is decreasing currency value is basically decreasing or any current any country's currency value might be decreased under two circumstances one way is uh, depreciation of currency second way is uh, devaluation of currency i'm not here to give you a deep outlook but i want you to understand this kind of news because this kind of news will give you a lot of confusion i repeat currency value may be decreased because of two reasons two two ways number one depreciation of currency number two devaluation of currency depreciation of currency that is rupee will happen only because of change in demand and supply simply speaking in a normal parlance when there is lot of demand for foreign currency obviously rupee value has to go down it means when the dollar demand is more then definitely that is going to have an impact on indian currency right so depreciation of any currency happens due to changes in the market parameters that is demand and supply okay so look at this depreciation of currency rupee depreciation means that the rupee has become less valuable with respect to us dollar in the sense word they get more rupees it normally happens due to demand and supply if uh, what uh, government of india has to do government of india through monetary policy government of india through monetary policy has to is to introduce or change interest rates and make sure that depreciation is corrected properly let's look at this value of indian currency is less so another opinion is that when the value of currency is less american fellow who wanted to purchase goods in india he will get more goods of india because goods of india have become cheaper because value of indian currency is very less so in other words there is every possibility it can lead to increase in exports but it is not always when see here the third point if you could see inflation can lead to higher input costs that means because of the decrease in the value there is going to be something called increase in inflation then what happens which makes nations export less competitive in global market so obviously when your currency value is less exports are going to be less competitive and obviously current account deficit will widen imports will be more exports will be less you will face further problem so this news if you could see so let us look at something called what are the reasons why currency generally depreciates when currency when currency depreciation we study we are basically studying about something called due to demand and supply in the market rupee value will be depreciated so the intervention of demand and supply is going to determine this so it says the increase in budget deficit which means lot of expenses revenues are very less can lead to an increase in trade deficit mean the international trade deficit definitely will increase because your budget deficit is very high to fill that budget deficit you might try to decrease the value of rupee and anything can happen so factors generally that can cause currency to appreciate or appreciation means increase in the value depreciation means decrease in the value of rupee that happens due to this relative product prices that means if countries goods are relatively cheap foreigners would would want to buy those goods that means if your country goods are very cheap which means your currency value i mean you will try to give more rupees than when i say decrease in the value of rupee which means you are giving more rupees to the exchange of dollar so in this case what generally happens the trade deficit will increase because revenue will be very less earnings will be very less all right then let's look at what is devaluation of currency the depreciation happens due to intervention of demand and supply and devaluation of currency happens because of the intervention of the government sometimes government wants to increase exports wants to boost exports if you want to increase exports then you have to give more rupees to them so that they will be attracted towards indian products 
like instead of giving 40 rupees for one dollar if i give him 100 rupees for one dollar they think that indian products are very cheap so they would definitely try to buy more products from india so depreciation happens due to natural demand and increase demand or supply in the market but devaluation happens due to uh, decrease in the value of rupee by the government deliberately so monetary authority here basically in india reserve bank of india interferes and try to this is one concept but today in the newspaper if you could see there's a lot of depreciation because of only one thing india wants a lot of oil oil bill is increasing and this is leading to more prices more shortage then ultimately leading to inflation why devaluation why devaluation because i told you very clearly we wanted to achieve an economic policy that is we wanted to boost exports if you want to make exports more cheaper give them more rupees against each dollar so giving more rupees against each dollar would definitely make our products more attractive then foreigners would love to buy indian products so more exports more foreign exchange this would help us actually to decrease or minimize trade deficit that is the other way explanation then in this news uh, same in the news you will also find two terms i i my objective is to tell you the basics how to understand that news first of all because if you are clear with the news then you will understand what exactly is that and in future slides uh, and videos i will come up with exactly the clear cut explanation about what is inflation etc etc in the today's newspaper you will also find something called foreign portfolio investments will be affected see the investments uh, in India from foreign countries will be of two types one is foreign direct investment second thing is foreign portfolio investment foreign direct investment is basically something where foreigner foreign company comes to India directly with the help of his technology and invest in India or he invest in Indian company which is more than 10 percent I repeat foreign direct investment is a situation where a foreigner comes and invest in India directly or he invest more than 10% in an indian company thereby he will have some control or management so foreign direct investment by nature it's a long term investment it's going to be very difficult for that investment to go out of the country so we should look forward to have more of foreign direct investment but unfortunately nowadays indian stock exchange is also affected by foreign portfolio investment foreign portfolio investment is basically the investment which is invested by foreigner in indian company shares and bonds that means if a foreigner has bought a share up to 10 percent of indian company in india obviously that is called foreign portfolio investment the investment which is made in share market this is basically short term and if any sense like this kind of rupee value or anything happens a depreciation of rupee anything happens like this they will definitely pull out and rush out of the country and rushing out of, so the lot of buying spree will happen so they will take out their investment they will sell the shares and take their money and go out so the economic policy has to be in such a way that this investment should not be affected because a lot of money payouts will happen that is one thing you could see in this news today then one more thing if you could see cap cabinet uh, okay's 2000 crore capital infusion for export guarantor across uh, financial year 2017 and 20 there is something called e export credit guarantee corporation so the basic objective of government of india to allot money to ecgc export credit guarantee corporation is basically to promote micro small medium enterprises and to promote exports so government has decided very clearly to pump more and more money into the ECGC so that this will enable ECGC to provide underwriting facility for the companies who are raising money in the stock exchange which is meant for increasing exports. So if you want to increase exports, if you want to increase exports specifically if you want to increase the exports of small scale industries like micro small medium enterprises then you got to have funds. So there is an organization called ECGC. So government has decided to allocate 1040 crores to National Insurance Account Trust as well, which is mainly meant for projecting more and more exports. If you look at the history of ECGC, I have uh, come up with brief information about this. ECGC Limited, which was earlier known as Export Credit Guarantee Corporation of India Limited, head office is there in Mumbai. It provides export credit insurance to those exporters who would want. This is completely under the control of Ministry of Commerce. Government of India 
in the beginning initially it has set up something called export risk insurance corporation in 1957 then that export risk insurance corporation over a period of time has been converted into export credit guarantee corporation limited in the year 1964 and finally in the year 1983 it has come to be known as export credit guarantee corporation of india whose main objective is obviously to take care of export finance and insurance then the name of the company has been changed recently in the year 2014 as export credit guarantee corporation of india limited looking at this name you could definitely understand it has got a status of public company clear then head office is there in mumbai so this is the seventh largest credit issuer of the world look at this seventh largest presently paid up capital is around 1200 crores and an authorized capital of 5000 crores whose main objective is basically to promote export in uh, today's newspaper you could see government is very keen to make sure that the exports have to be facilitated at any cost and for that reason we have allocated this money if you could see the next one functions briefly if you want to because sometimes when this kind of a thing is touched upon definitely they would def they would ask you about uh, you know objectives policies functions etc provides range of credit risk insurance for the exports offers guarantees to banks which are helping exporters provides overseas investment insurance to indian companies investing in joint ventures if in case indian companies are investing in joint ventures they need any financial support in terms of loans and advances yes ecgc is going to help them facilities if you could see insurance protection will be given to the exporters against the pay like, like you exported you don't get the payment on time meanwhile you have to continue the business during that time your business is going to be affected so this is going to provide insurance provides guidance to export related activities makes available information that is required credit ratings of different makes it easy obtain so simply if you could see all these it will help you to promote exports in such if in case you sold you could not get money don't worry the risk is going to be borne by this if in case you want some information related to exports yes it is going to provide it if in case exporters are facing a lot of difficulties in recovering debts which are already accounts receivables etc then this is going to be doing it and it will provide maximum possible information to all the exporters before they export to other countries any relevant information that is required if in case they don't have this information it's going to be very difficult so therefore this has the onus of providing information which is required I hope you got an idea briefly this is how exactly when the news is given in Indian economy especially related to mains or prelims please do focus like this collect information gather information like this or read like this then you will definitely have a grip over all the points so they won't ask exactly the direct question right so you you must have seen the question paper so question paper pattern is completely different they'll give you so many points and ask you which point which what point which two points which three points like this so you got to be very careful all right and one more thing if you could see fti fpi said foreign portfolio investment is basically the investment which is invested by foreigners in indian company shares up to 10 percent which is basically a short term and foreign direct investment is basically investing in india directly in manufacturing or companies and or directly into the company of india more than 10 percent so fdi is of long term fpi is of short term that's it for today. Thank you so much. Keep uh, watching my videos and uh, let me know what all kind of topics you want in Indian economy. I would come up with that. And otherwise, every day Indian economy, even if it's a small bit, little bit, I'm going to come up with that. Please do subscribe our channel. Thank you so much.